Hi everyone. We're doing something a little bit different with this episode, but we've got Sam and Lee and, and, and myself going through the the Windows 365 Cloud PC admin and user experience, and we think it's a fantastic episode. I hope you enjoy it. In the meantime, though, let's just quickly talk about our sponsor, so Recast Software. They are running some webinars, right? So these are really good webinars that are coming up. We've got the Device Insights webinar on March 3rd, Automation in Action on March 16th, and then Software Updates on April 5th. Check out recastsoftware.com for more information, but they are going to be absolutely awesome, as all the stuff that Recast do is. Massive thanks to Recast for sponsoring this episode and, and keeping us going. There's such a, a lot of time and money and investment that goes into creating these episodes and getting access to cloud PCs, for example, to do this kind of demonstration. So thanks to Recast. Anyway, let's get going. Hi, Windows 365 now supports Azure AD Join for cloud PCs, which was one of the most requested features ever for a Microsoft product. In this video, we're going to explain how it works and discuss the admin and user experience. Simon's joining me today so that we can go through the user experience on his side and the admin experience on my side. Hello, Simon. Hi, Dean. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. It is your channel as well. Um, so if we jump into my screen, then I'm going to put you on the. I think I'm going to put you on the right, and then share. Yeah. How do I share? It's one of these buttons here, I think, which is there. There it is. So this is my. Um, Windows 365 tenant. So what we're going to do is jump into devices and then down to Windows 365. I've got a couple of cloud PCs already. Um, Jenny and Paige had one for a demonstration I did earlier on. But we're going to look at this new provisioning policy because they were using uh, the OPNC, the on-premise network connector, as their method of um, their method of provisioning a cloud PC. And in this case, I want to try a new one, which will be uh, the Azure AD native join rather than the on-premise network connection hybrid join version. I'm just going to close this down a bit so we've got a bit more space because I've zoomed in to give a, a better um, resolution on this screen. So we'll choose create policy there. And this looks different to how it used to look. I mean, for me, it looks different to how it used to look about 12 hours ago, but you know, it's it's very recently updated. So this is Azure AD join. And as you can see, we're going to do the Azure AD join, which is in public preview now. And the network we get to choose is Microsoft hosted network. So it's interesting that if we choose Microsoft hosted network, we can also choose an on-premise network connection if we happen to have one, or we can also go to hybrid join and choose the on-premise network connection. The reason for that is that if we want to do uh, Azure AD join and still have that connection to the on-premise network, but just not use the hybrid join, do you know what I mean? Um, so we don't want to join it to the domain, but we want to uh, still have access to the on-premise network, then that's what this option would be here. But I'm, I'm not planning to do that because I don't have anything interesting in my on-premise network. So we're going to do Azure AD join which is in preview, and then choose a region. We'll go with UK South, because that's approximately where we are. Um, so have you done much with the previous, the on-premise network connection version of this? No, not yet. It, it's something that I'm toying with looking into, and I know that like the, the Azure AD join was on the roadmap for a while. I know from yeah. like an AVD standpoint, I think it's going to be a game changer. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I I didn't refuse to use it. I just couldn't bring myself to to really get to grips with it when it was so restricted by uh, having to have an on-premise network connection, yeah. which then if, if you've got a domain controller that isn't in Azure, then you've got to have a VNet and the, the VPN and yeah. sort all that. And I'm not, an, I'm not an Azure person. So that was a big barrier to entry for me. And I'm sure a lot of organizations feel the same. Um, anyway, enough about that. Let's choose next. And we're going to choose the image type. And in this case, I'm going to make it simple for myself and for you to watch. We're going to go with a gallery image and just choose 21H2 version of Windows 11 with M365 apps. Um, I happen to have about that size of a CPU on this uh, domain, so that will work nicely. So we'll choose next. And then we get to choose this configuration bit. This is also new. 
uh, it, it automatically did English United States in the past. Now we have a ton of other languages that we can choose from. Let's go with the United Kingdom because once again, we're in the UK. So yep. let's try that. Uh, choose next. And I created a user for you, uh, sorry, a group for you uh, that I added you into. So we'll just go and grab that, which was, I think it was Windows 365 ADJ. There you go. Perfect. We'll click that and choose next. And so that's it for our provisioning policy for Windows 365. We're not making anything too complicated here. We aren't yeah. using our custom image or anything. So um, it is very simple. As you can see, we'll just choose create and that'll go away and create. Now in the past that used to have this on-premise network connection thing here. And when you were setting up the on-premise network connection that, oh dear, that would take uh, its time in, in the first place that would have uh, a bit of time to set up. So there was always this bit of delay. Now, if you don't have to do that, I'm assuming this is going to be a much quicker process altogether. Anyway, so if we've got this one here, it says done. Uh, what the provisioning policy being deployed or assigned to a group does is it create, I think it creates, um, let me go back to that. I think it creates a cloud PC for everyone with a license, but you don't have a license. Let me do that. Um, I'm going to just grab your user and yep. give you a license because that will probably help an awful lot. So we'll just give you a license, which will be down here and assignments and Windows 365 Enterprise. Save, all good. Right, so that should now in my devices section and in Windows 365, hopefully be assigning you a cloud PC very shortly. Um, cool. So we'll give that a couple of minutes and then you can try logging in from your side. So if we can share your screen um, shortly, then that would be good to to test out and I really just want to see how quick it is. So we'll start a timer for the sake of YouTube. We'll cut it and make it a bit faster for you to watch because there's no point in you spending all this time watching it, but we'll, we'll jump back in um, after that break and see how long it's taken. As you can see, it's provisioning and it's now, uh, I'll move my head. There you go. Um, 7.58 today, uh, which is the time it is now. So provisioning, um, that only took a, a couple of minutes to actually About appear. Minutes, if that... Yeah, to actually appear in the in the list. So I'll just refresh that page. Uh, it says not provisioned. I'll give it a few more minutes. Um, I'm expecting twenty, maybe twenty minutes, for it to actually fully provision. Uh, the on-premise version took a long time, uh, yeah. an hour or so, at least an hour when I was testing it the first time around. So yeah, we'll give it a little while longer and come back in a bit. Okay, so we'll give this one last refresh. Uh, it's just almost nine o'clock, which means it's been over an hour now. Uh, yeah. Provision these numbers, the same as go to all cloud PCs. Ah, huh? oh, there he is. So we have a device name, which is this one here. Um, Azure AD join, this one, no one from its network connection and provisioned with warning. Okay. I'm not too fussed about a warning, but let's see what it is. Uh, we couldn't install the PC selected language for your provisioned cloud PC. Well, that's a shame. Hopefully you can speak American. Um, I, we'll see. I can try. <laughs> Maybe that's why it took Maybe that's why it took so long. Maybe we shouldn't have done that uh, yeah. during during our first our first attempt. Right, let's jump over to your screen and see what we see. Sure. So I've already obviously gone through, logged in with the account that, that that you've created for me. So this is running through the first time setup for it. Green with a spinny wheel saying that we've got Azure AD join in progress. Ah. Uh, and this, this, what a cloud PC is. So if you zoom in on that, cause I can't quite see that on my screen, but, uh, this is the familiar screen that I've seen in all of the other demos of, of windows 365, where presumably you have a card per 
cloud PC when you have more than one, because some organizations are apparently going to have more than one cloud PC per person. Yeah. Cool. So here we are. So I'll log in with my password here. Super quick typing there. Well done. I know. Magic of video editing. It's nice that it's put the keyboard up for you in case you happen to not have a keyboard. Um, yeah. But there you go. So, okay, so it took an hour, and let's assume it was an hour because um, because of the... to get it to install a language package. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because of that. Maybe that was a bad, it was a bad idea. Um, so, uh, let's see how this one goes when we log in. Oh, awesome. Well, that's it. Right, um, it's yeah. a it's a it's a cloud PC. Um, so yeah. you've got into it f just from using your browser. Um, yeah. It might be worth let not today, but in a future video, let's go through some of the additional ways you can sign into these cloud PCs and the, some of the benefits you get from each of these different ways that you can. Because I know there's like a no, well, there's the remote desktop client. I assume there's the the downloadable MSI X one. Um, I the, 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 the store app is what it's called. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's good. Well, this, this was fun. Um, can we just jump back onto, um, the devices screen? I'll just move over. Just show this, um, because what I noticed a little moment ago was the enrollment time on this device, mm -hmm. which is not properties. It's in the overview. Thank you. Um, oh, the, now the check-in time was that I found the enrollment time while I was hunting around. Um, there you go. It's 19. So that's about 20 minutes. Had it, had it not been trying to install a language pack that we clearly didn't need yeah. for this demonstration, um, it would have been, it would have been 20 minutes and we wouldn't have been sat here talking to each other for 40 minutes without, without that. Anyway, yeah. this was good. Um, let jump back to this. So we're both here. Uh, thanks Simon for joining me on this. We will yeah, clearly do another video. Uh, hopefully if you're up for it, where we can cover yeah, definitely. more of the user experience side, I think, and maybe test out with out adding a language pack in and see what the actual time yeah, is the for that. Times. Yeah, that'd be good. But uh, that, that's it for now. So thanks for joining. We'll see you next time. Great. See you soon.